guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day and welcome back to my channel. I am pretty sure this is the first makeup tutorial I'm filming for this year. In the past month, I didn't do my makeup, well, I did my makeup one time. So I did my makeup one time the entire month of March. I didn't wear any makeup basically. And I kind of went through this and just feeling like it was it just didn't feel right to film and just to sit down and film and put on a happy face. It just didn't feel very genuine. And so I just decided for myself not to film and not to create content until I felt like it was right. Um, and I feel like I've gone through that time and I've realized that I do find so much joy in making tutorials and I really enjoy um, creating these looks for you guys and also helping to teach you guys how to do these different tricks. And maybe you're sitting at home right now like we all all are and you're wanting to learn something new and maybe you want to try out doing makeup. So today's makeup tutorial is on this eyeshadow look here. It is a great neutral eyeshadow look. I feel like you can find these types of colors in any palette. I am using the James Charles palette today because I've had so many requests from you guys to film another video with that palette. So that's the palette I'm using. I'm also only using one brush in this video. Now I know for me when I was first starting out I didn't really have a lot of brushes and so especially right now we don't have the ability to go into the store and grab some more. So if you guys are just working with what you have right now at home, I want to make this as easy for you as possible. So I am using one brush. However, if you have more than one brush, that's totally fine. I also show you guys different types of brushes you might want to use if you have more than one. And I explain when and why you'd want to use more than one brush. But going back to when I was starting off doing makeup, I only use like maybe one or two brushes. So I wanted to make this as easy as possible. And if you guys have not seen my videos before, I do spend a lot of time explaining what I'm doing. So if you're more advanced and you like more fast paced tutorials. I will admit this might be a little slow for you, but I try to make my videos as easy as possible for a wide range of people. So if you are more advanced, you can maybe skip through some parts, but if you do need a little bit more detail and explanation, I make sure to really include that for you guys. So anyways, without further ado, let's just jump right into the makeup tutorial. Starting off, I am priming my eyes. I'm using the P. Louise base. This is in the shade of Rumor 0 0.05. So I'm taking a little bit on the back of my hand, dipping into that with my ring finger. And I'm just going to lightly tap that onto my eyes. I'm mainly concentrating that primer towards the middle of my eye, right on my lid. And then I am lightly blending that up towards my brow bone as well. The brush I'm using for today's tutorial is the Morphe M433 brush. You can see it is more of a blending brush, but it definitely has a narrower tip to it. So it's not super flat. It does have kind of a point to it, and that's going to help us out a lot um, towards the end of this tutorial. If you are using more than one brush for this tutorial, I would also recommend using the Sephora Pro, it's the number 27. You can see it's a little bit fluffier than this brush in comparison, looking at the two of them. This one is a little bit fluffier. You can use this for the first step. For starters, I am taking the shade Canvas. It is one of the lighter shades in the palette, and I'm just buffing that into my crease line. This is not a shade you will really see in the end result, but what it's doing is just creating a really nice base for us as we move forward. The next shade we're going to use is the shade Punch Me. If you are using more than one brush, you are more than welcome to keep using the same brush you are currently using. So I'm going to start lightly working in that shade right above where my crease is so you can still see that color even when I'm looking straight ahead. So I'm just kind of lightly going back and forth the pressure I am taking is very, very light. So I were to turn my eye to the side here. You can see I'm not pushing in like that. I'm just very lightly, just almost dusting it, dusting it on. I like how Nikki Tutorials explains it. She just says you're kind of like lightly scratching. You're not really pushing into it. You're just kind of like itching something. So I'm just kind of starting in that middle section and I'm just going back and forth very, very lightly. And you'll also want to take your time with this. To be completely honest, my makeup always looks really great when I'm filming tutorials, mainly because I just take so long to explain what I'm doing and I take much longer doing a tutorial than I would do my makeup naturally. And I find that when I really am slow with it and I take my time, my makeup looks so much better. So if you are just learning and you do have the time to really be patient with this and try this out, I would recommend just setting aside time when you can really dedicate time to learning how to do this. So once I feel like the color is built up enough in the crease area, I will start to slowly bring that down towards the outer portion of my eye here. And again, very, very lightly, kind of going in circular motions. I'm going to kind of close out that rainbow. 
Next, I'm going to pick up the shade T. It is a darker brown color, and I'm going to pick up the slightest amount of this shade. Now, if you are using more than one brush, I would recommend switching to a brush. Um, still, you could use a bigger blending brush, but something that's a little bit more narrow like this one. So the first one I showed you was a little bit fluffier, but for this step, you will want to use something with more of a point to it because I will kind of be using the narrowness of this brush to really kind of define that color. So I would recommend moving to a brush similar to this. You don't necessarily have to use a detailed brush, but something smaller than the brush you were using before. So I'm just lightly tapping into that. And the color you can see on my brush is right at the top of the brush. So it's not along the sides. I've barely tapped into that brush. And that's why if you are doing a tutorial like this and you only have one brush, it's really great to have a brush that is a fluffy blending brush, but also has kind of a point to it. So you can really use that for more of the detailed work. What I'm going to do with this shade is really concentrate that towards the outer third of my eye. So not like in the direct middle, but more towards the outer portion here. So I'm going to just fully extend my eyelid. So what I mean by full extend is I don't want to be looking straight ahead because it's kind of hard to see what you're doing. I want to kind of hold my head back at this angle. So in person, I'll just lean back for a second. You guys can see when I'm doing this, I'm not looking straight on like this. I'm actually holding my head back at this angle where I can fully extend my lid so I can see more of what I'm doing. I have a little bit more space to work with when my face is at this angle. So if you're doing your makeup at home and you're getting frustrated and you feel like you're not able to get as precise as you would like with it, it might be the way that you're holding your face when you're doing your makeup. So I don't usually do my makeup straight on like this and see how when like, if I'm not like lifting my eyebrows, see how my like eyelids kind of fall down. It's really hard to get in there and have like an even enough space to work with. But I feel like if I tilt my head back like this, and this is how I take my Instagram photos too, as I'm holding my head at this angle where you can really see everything. Taking the shade T again and working towards that outer third of the eye here. And I'm just going to start lightly tapping that and then just rubbing it back and forth. I'm really not moving a lot in this area. Again, like I showed you guys before, I'm barely touching my eye. I'm really not pressing down hard. And then when there's less pigment on the brush, I'm going to move downwards and kind of go in circular motions and go towards the middle. And then I am starting to use a little more pressure and again, blending out a little bit more when there's less pigment on the brush. I'm picking up a little more of that shade T and I'm going to work a little bit higher this time to kind of help raise my eye shape and I feel like that has already helped a lot. So again, really trying to keep that rounded shape and I'm blending it out, blending it down. If you feel like it's kind of sticking, like right here, it has a really harsh edge. What I'll do is I'll go in and take the color I used before that. So the color I used before this is the shade Punch Me. So what I'll do is take a little bit of Punch Me. And I have a lot of it on the side of my brush here. So you can see it comes about like halfway, not halfway down, but like a third of the way down. It's not all just concentrated on the top. It's coming down a little bit. What I will do is hold my brush at an angle on my face and just slightly rub back and forth to help buff that out. And then I will use the top of my brush just to help blend. And sometimes you have to go in and do that a couple of times to help kind of blend out your edges. I'll go back in with T a little bit just to kind of deepen that back up. And a lot of the time what I do is I will just kind of go back and forth and using a couple different colors and just spending a lot of time blending. But part of the challenge is too, is you don't want to necessarily do this step over and over again where you're going to one shade then the next because it will tend to muddy it up. So you do want to be really precise and take your time, be patient with it because the less you go back and forth, back and forth, the cleaner it will look. But as you guys can see by keeping it right above my crease, even when I have my eye straightforward, you can still see a lot of the work that I've done. So I'm now taking the shade T, I'm gonna start working it down towards my outer eye here. But again, I'm going to start lightly tapping. So this is where it starts to get a little challenging if you just have one brush, because this is such a small amount of area and I didn't lay down tape or anything. You have to be really precise. So I'm making sure that this color is just at the top of my brush, it's not on the sides. And when I apply this, I'm not holding it at an angle or anything, I'm holding it almost like straight um, perpendicular to my eye and I'm going to start lightly like patting that on. 
So it is a little more challenging if you're just using one brush because when you're doing more detailed work or working in smaller areas, it is a little bit trickier, but it is doable. So I'm just kind of pressing that on, more so tapping as opposed to like sweeping. And then when there's less pigment, I will again kind of bring that closer to the middle point of my eye and just kind of fade that forward. As you can see, that looks pretty blended and you can see definitely a fade of those colors into one another. And that's really how you can get this like faded ombre look is by using multiple colors and being patient when blending them out. So I wanted to show you guys really quick. I just went ahead and did some catch up. Basically, I just went ahead and did this eye maybe in about a third to a half of the time that took me to do this side. This eye took me about like 15 minutes because I was videotaping it and kind of explaining what I was doing. This one off camera took me like, again, like maybe like five minutes, like a third of the time. But as you can tell, like taking your time really does make a difference. This eye looks a lot cleaner, a lot sharper than this one does. I think both look great. I love the look of both of these, but they definitely look different in the sense that this one looks a lot, um, Sloppier is not the best word to use, but it looks like a lot more blown out. Um, I think it's beautiful, but you guys can see the difference between the two of them, how this one is definitely a lot muddier looking and it looks a little bit choppier, whereas this looks a lot smoother. So I know sometimes um, when you're watching tutorials, they go through things pretty quickly, but it's totally okay to take your time. I know for me, I generally rush through things if I'm doing my own makeup. So a lot of my eyeshadows look like this, just if I'm in a hurry going somewhere. Um, but when I'm really sitting down and taking my time and spending like a good hour of my makeup, it looks a lot cleaner like this. So if you see other people's makeup and then you do yours and you feel like, wow, like it just really doesn't look the same or you get discouraged, you don't know how much time they spent on that. They could have spent a really long amount of time on that. And if you're not spending as much time on it, it might not look as sharp or crisp. So um, even using the exact same brush, using the exact same products, you can see a difference between the two eyes, mainly just because I was kind of rushing through this eye just to get caught up to come back to this eye. So anyways, just wanna give that little disclaimer because it's something that I noticed and I'm the same person doing the same eyes and it looks a little different. For this next part, if you are using two different brushes, I would recommend using a brush more like this one. This is the Morphe M506 brush. You can see it is a lot smaller there we go. It's a lot smaller than this brush. And so when we're using a little bit darker colors, it'll be easier to get in there and kind of tap on those shades if you're using a smaller brush. Again, I'm showing you guys how to use one brush for this tutorial. So if you only have one, that's totally fine. But if you have more than one and have something close to this, you might want to be using this for this part of the tutorial. The next shade we're using is the shade Benny. It's like the second darkest shade in the palette. And again, just like we did with T, we are picking that up on the very top of the brush. So I'm going to just start working this in the outer corner of my eye, close to my lash line, and just really start tapping that on like that. As you can see, I've barely touched my eye and it's already really pigmented. So you'll wanna be really careful when using this shade because you definitely don't wanna go all over with it. So just kind of pressing that on, and again, keeping it low. We do want this to be more of like a blown out look, so it's okay to kind of feather that in towards the middle. When I say feather, I just kind of mean like lightly dusting it towards the middle, like you would with like a feather duster. <laughs> and picking up a little bit more, and again, just tapping it on, keeping it low, almost like if you were doing a winged eyeliner where you would put the wing, and then softly blending that upwards when there's less product on the brush. If you are only using one brush, you can do it. It will look fine. You just need to be really careful and take your time with it and not be too quick to just push that all over the eye. I'm not sure how easy it is for you guys to tell or not, but I'm really taking my time. When I dip into the pigment, I probably dipped in about four times now. I'm picking up the slightest amount and just working with that little amount each and every time. So it's better to work in small sections. It's better to work with a little bit of pigment at a time and slowly build it up as opposed to just dipping into that, swirling it around and plopping it on. It'll be a lot easier to blend out. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of tea and just start to put that right towards the middle section of my eye like that and blending that in. I like to keep my eye open as opposed to closing it while I'm doing my looks too, because it's like your eyes are gonna be open when you're looking at people and doing things. And I feel like when I close my eye, it just looks so much different. So I try to keep my eye open as much as possible when doing my eyeshadow. I guess I'm pulling that towards the part I want to be the darkest. So I want this part to be the darkest. So what I'm doing is I'm starting right here and I'm pulling it into that. And that's how I'm kind of creating that ombre look. 
I'm not going out this way because it'll push the product out towards the middle. I'm pulling that towards where I want that to be the darkest. So I'm not going back and forth. I'm strategically just kind of dragging that towards the bottom part of my eye. Also, sorry if the light's changing. I'm using natural lighting, so naturally the sun is moving as I'm doing this, so it's gonna look very different from the beginning to the end. But for this next step, if you do have a brush, it's a flat brush that looks kinda like this. See how it's very, very narrow and flat? You might wanna use that. I always like using my hands when I'm applying shadow towards like the middle of my eye. I feel like um, if I'm trying to pick up shadow and I want to be really pigmented, using my hands works great. But if you want to use a brush like this, I'll just show you. I'm picking up that first shade canvas and what I'm doing with it is I'm just going to apply it directly on the lid like that to kind of help cut the crease in a sense. So if you want to use a flat brush like this to help really get in there and create that perfect cut right underneath, you are more than welcome to do so. If you are using that, what I would recommend doing is just kind of dragging down, like going up to the point where you want to be the most precise, like as close to that crease as possible, and then just dragging it down towards the middle. Maybe going a little bit side to side. And then what I would do is kind of like pull that in towards the middle. And rounding that out. See, I cleaned that up a lot. So if you wanna use a flat brush, you can, but I'm gonna use my hand. For those of us that are only using one brush, we're going to use our hands. So picking up a little bit of that on my ring finger, just right on the pad here. What I'm then going to do is kind of start in the middle and just blend that out and kind of go in towards the inner corner. Again, I'm kind of pressing and lightly pulling. I'm not swiping that and I'm not like going all over with it because we want this to be as precise as possible. When I'm getting closer to that crease, it's nice that we've been really careful and detailed because it already looks pretty good. I don't really need to clean it up in a sense. I will kind of just press it down where I want it to be though and pull down like that. Maybe lightly go back and forth. But we're using the exact same technique where I'm kind of just pressing it down where I want it to go and then pulling in. It's better in this sense to kind of go a little bit lower than to actually go too high because you don't want to ruin the look we've created. And I'm just kind of kind of slightly blend that into the other colors we have, but that's pretty good. We don't really have to do a lot with that step because again, we've done such a great job being careful and taking our time with it that it already looks pretty clean already. But if you, let's just say we're in a hurry and you already did the other eye, it really helps. I'll use my hand on this one. It really does help to help clean it up. And you don't necessarily need to use a liquid um, concealer or a liquid primer, you can just go in with a lighter shadow to kind of help clean that up. But this step really does help really make your lid pop more and really define that crease as well. If you're liking where it's at, you can definitely just leave it here. You don't have to do anything else with it. If you want to get a little deeper, you can dip into that um, spooky shade. It is very, very dark, very pigmented. So you'll want to be extremely careful using that shade and go as light as possible because it'll become very easy to just kind of blow this out of proportion. Again, if you do have a smaller brush, I would recommend using that. But using our one brush, going to lightly dip into that very very lightly like the smallest amount so I'm going to really only concentrate that towards the outer portion of my eye so I'm barely touching it so see how dark that is but you'd want to put that basically where you would naturally put like an eyeliner so that's probably about as far as I'd bring it up I really don't want to bring it any higher than that and it is kind of hard to blend out, but that's probably as dark as I would go. But it does kind of help to create like a, almost like a faux soft wing eyeliner look. It's just hard to use, again, with one brush, it is kind of challenging to use. It's a little bit easier to use if you have a more detailed brush. So I'll show you on this side with the detailed brush. That looks like this. It's a little bit easier to get in there and it's a little bit easier to hold that line 
For the lower lash line, if you're using more than one brush, I would recommend using a smudge brush like this. Very dense, short bristles, and they're pretty thick too. This is really easy to use, and it gets really tight there underneath the eye just to help really define that. If you are just using one brush, you don't even have to. Like sometimes I don't do my under eyes at all. It is pretty challenging with such a fat brush to really get underneath there and have it look crisp. So if you're using shades underneath the eye, I would probably use the shade T and maybe the slightest amount of Benny, but I would start with Punch Me. So I'd probably use Punch Me or Tea, and I'll show you what that looks like. If you don't have a brush cleaner, I would I would recommend using a brush cleaner if you're just using one brush. If you don't have something like that, you could always use a tissue too and just wipe off some of those shades. So I'm just gonna wipe it off actually on my arm. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. And just try to get some of that pigment off and make sure it's as clean, meaning that it doesn't really have much of that other pigment on it. I feel like that's kind of helped get rid of that pigment. I'm starting off with the shade Punch Me and picking it up as much as possible on the top of the brush. And then for this, I know I've been talking about like holding your eye back so you can see your lid. For this, I'm actually gonna hold my eye down. So again, I'm expanding the lower part of my eye. So now I'm expanding this part. Cause if you do this, it kind of makes it hard to get in there in a clean way. But if you look down or look you're basically looking straight, but you're kind of tilting your head down. It helps to expand this part of your eye. Again, this is very challenging to do with such a fat brush. But I'm going to just kind of lightly blend back and forth. I'm picking up the shade Punch Me. And it's pretty close to my skin tone, so you might want to use a shade darker than this if you have a deeper skin tone than me. Then lightly picking up the shade T. And just concentrating that towards the back third or back half of my eye. And again, going back and forth. And then if you want to pick up Benny, what I recommend doing is picking up a little bit on your brush. And then what I'm going to do is just pinch the bristles to make them a little bit flatter like that. And then that's going to really help make it as sharp as possible. So you're almost like faking a, <laughs> a more defined brush, but it helps, it works. So by doing that, I'm able to really keep that nice and tight around my lash line and it doesn't come down too far. And honestly, that looks pretty good. That looks almost just as good as it would look like if I had a smaller brush. So see, you can do this all with one brush. This works great. So, but just to show you guys, if you did have a smudge brush, what that would look like. Going into T. Kind of running that back and forth. Again, I can be a little bit sloppier because it's more defined. And then picking up Benny and just really keeping that tight to my waterline. But again, I was able to do that in a third of the time with the smaller brush and it went a lot easier and a lot quicker. But it, ultimately it has the same look as both. You just have to really make sure that you're pinching your other brush to keep it as tight as you would with a smaller brush. So that is it for the eyeshadow portion of this. If you would like, you could add in um, some black liner. If you do have black liner, you can add black liner to the top of this. You could even use, if you have a smaller brush, you can even kind of smudge that along the lash line with the shade Spooky if you want to really deepen it up. What I'm going to do is apply some false lashes and mascara and come right back to show you guys the finished look. And this is what it looks like all together with some mascara and also a pop of some false lashes. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope that it was helpful and informative and maybe you learned some tricks that you guys didn't know before. I am really truly thinking of all of you right now as we go through this time. We are all experiencing different challenges, whether that's losing our jobs or maybe we just found out that we won't be able to see our friends for the rest of the school year or maybe your wedding might be in jeopardy, it might not be happening or you're losing family members. Like this is impacting all of us in so many different ways and I think that's why it's taking me so long to really get back down and film a makeup tutorial because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right to just keep going on like none of this was happening, but I realized that makeup is my passion and I feel so much happier when I'm able to help others. And if anything, we're all spending this time at home and maybe we can learn some new tricks and maybe makeup is your trick that you're trying to perfect and you're trying to work more on. So I really hope this tutorial could help you in some way and I hope we all get through this time together. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.